Hi guys, Jordan from PMP Campers. Just going to do your handover video on this Tolbert Express. Uh, so it's a Topic Express and it's the Holdsworth conversion inside. If I just pop this door open, I will run you through the inside in just a minute. But you've basically got your side settee just here, two single seats, and the front seats there with a little side kitchen and bathroom. So that is the general layout. So what I'm going to do is just give you a brief run around the outside of the vehicle. Um, I've pressure tested it, changed a few bits and pieces and just made sure that everything fires up and works basically. Um, so we've got the bonnet release handle just here inside the passenger door, just so that you know that. Um, and then I will show you around the outside. So we've got the fuel filling point just here on the front near side. The uh, spare wheel sits inside underneath the bonnet, um, which is really handy if you ever need to, you know, get to that. It's nice and easy to get to. Uh, so you have got the original build badge for it from Holdsworth itself, just so that you can see that and uh, see that it's genuine. The Fiat code, the, the, the paint number basically is 224. That's the white color throughout the vehicle. So if you ever need any touch up paints, it's 224. So under the bonnet, we've got the engine battery over on the left hand side. Brake fluid attached to the servo just here. So you have got power brakes. You've got your engine coolant in the overflow reservoir out there. Engine oil gets topped up through here. And your dipstick for that is the metal one just at the back of the engine there. Uh, you've got this over here, which is your washer fluid. So again, nice and easy to get to. Air filter sits underneath the spare wheel just there. Um, and I believe it's got electric power steering. Uh, the power steering works quite nicely. I'm just, just having a little look. I don't see any hydraulic uh, fluid anywhere. So I'm pretty sure it's electric power steering. Um, so that's under the bonnet. All really nice and tidy. Nothing sort of, you know, nothing nasty I can see. Flew through the MOT, no problems at all. But there you go. So, uh, if I just head round onto the near side now, door handle opens up from the right hand side. Uh, so, a bit of storage underneath this seat just here. Uh, and if I just jump in now, I'll just run you through what we've got inside. So, um, leisure battery sits down here underneath the driver's seat which is why i put it pushed all the way forwards so you've got really good access to that um if you ever need to replace it super easy to get to and you can push it out through the front um so that's really easy to get to underneath this seat just here is the propex space heater well it's not a space heater really but uh, propex heater um powered by the controller just there which i'll run you through in a second so you don't really need to get to any of that to be honest um just sort of leave that alone uh but yeah, that's under there. That's all working absolutely fine. So if I just show you how to use it, turn this switch into the middle to switch the heater off completely. If you push this switch to the right, you get the fan blowing just cool air. All right, so the, the air pumps out through this little black vent down the bottom. So pushing to the right gives you cool air only. If you go back to the middle and push to the left, that's when you'll get your heating and after a few minutes or so, you'll have hot air pumping out through that. So it really is as easy as that. Down here, and um, the reason I got this one opened up is so that I can show you what we've got going on in here. So uh, I've done a gas pressure test and replaced the regulator and hose here, because they were both out of date before. Um, so that's all been renewed. So you've got anti-clockwise round to the left, turns the bottle on, and clockwise round to the right, turns the bottle off. Once you've turned this off, you have also got this cover, which sits over the top of it. Okay. You've then got next door to that, the fresh water tank. So proper onboard tank. So inside the tank, you'll notice there is a pipe and a pump attached to it. So that is what's called a submersible pump. So basically, Anytime that you want the water coming through to the taps, 
that pump will run. Anytime that you don't want it to run you know, to the taps, it won't do, be doing anything at all. So there's a little red button up there on the side, uh, which is the power for the pump. So if you want the water coming through to the tap over there, you press and hold on the red button. So it really is as easy as that. That pump is new. I've just replaced that as well. Uh, the old one was a bit seized, so I thought I might as well just replace it for you. So all of this stuff down here has kind of been replaced, if you like, so it's all good. So um, you've got a three burner hob up here and grill underneath. So you've got right, left, grill and back. So that's what each one of those does. You do need an igniter to light these up because there's no ignition on any of these. But that really is as simple as that, really. So to close this back down, pull this over and then you can sort of do them individually. So you push that away and this will then drop down. So that's how you can close that over on its own. And then this side, you've got a separate little one which underhooks and drops down. But for the minute, I'm just gonna have that open. So um, as I said a minute ago, to use the pump, we press this button here. That then brings the water through to the tap nice and easy. Uh, and that then sort of nicely brings me on to the control panel here. So it's a ZIG unit. Um, so ZIG is the company that make these control panels. So very, very simple. Push down on the very left hand switch just here to get the power to come on. And that's the power from your ledger battery. Water pump switch basically just gives power to this button. So turn that on if you want to use the water at some point. You've then got two lights on and off switches basically here. And this little red and green light thing here is basically just telling you whether or not your ledger battery is in good condition. So if it starts to run a little bit low, it will come up here red. If it does come up red, it's not something to worry about. All it means is that you really need to plug a hookup cable into the vehicle and make sure that you get a good charge into it. Um, the charger itself is just down here and it just sits down there. So it's a C-Tech charger. So the old one was obviously, as you can probably tell, in that little square gap. Um, now, the only issue with the older one is that when I plugged it in on the hookup, it was only putting in, you know, it wasn't really putting in much power at all. Uh, so this one here is actually putting the, the battery up to about 14 and a half volts when you plug it in. Uh, the old one was only doing about 12 and a half, so it wasn't really working as it should. So I've replaced that for a brand new one there as well. Trip switches for when you're on the mains is there as well. And some of your gas isolators are under here. Turning them 90 degrees so they're facing sort of upright uh, or vertical is how you switch them off and leaving them as they are, as you can see now, is how they are on. All right, it does tell you to the right what each one does as well. So basically, if you thought you had an, you know, a problem with an individual appliance, you can isolate it from the gas in there. As I said though, it is always really good practice to switch the gas off before you start driving. Um, so like, for example, now I'm finished with the heater, turn that off. And then if I'm getting ready to drive off, I would go all the way around to the right until it stops. Put my cover back on. And then pop the lid down. And that's it. So easy as that to put the gas away. Um, that's all you have to do. And once you've done that, that is then completely isolated uh, and good to go. So you've got various lights around the vehicle, all working really nicely. Um, not drawing too much power either. Uh, they're not very high power lights really. Um, so they are all over the place really. So I'll pop them back on so I can see what I'm doing. You've got uh, TV aerial on the roof, which will be wired up into this TV socket, I believe. Let me just have a little look. Yeah, so the TV aerial itself on the roof is essentially wired straight through from this white cable here into the booster, which as you can see there is currently on, so that's working. There is a little switch on the top left hand side to turn that on and off if you're not using it. So basically what you've got is as I say, the cable runs in from the aerial on the roof into the booster. So if you want to use the TV, just switch the booster on and then it's wired up to this socket. So if you had a TV on a bracket just here, which is what somebody has done in the past, you'd either plug it into the mains if you're hooked up on the mains or the 12 volt if you're not, and then 
put your aerial cable into the TV socket there and that should then give you a really good signal from the aerial on the roof. So that's how that works. So, you know, basically just don't forget to turn the TV aerial booster on if you uh, want to use the TV. Down below this, we've got your fitted tables. So there is a, underneath that mattress there, there is a little circle in the floor, which these poles go into. You can either use the bigger table or the smaller one, completely up to you. Um, and I think they probably are used to make up the bed in some way or one way or another. Uh, they're all slightly different, but uh, there you go. We have got a fire extinguisher down there. I haven't really tested that if I'm honest, but uh, it is there if you want to use it. And obviously just loads of storage in there as well. Bathroom. Um, switch that light on there you go you say like you say i walked through the vehicle and, and to be fair you know all the lights came on everything sort of worked i mean the pump was a bit naff so i replaced that uh gas stuff was out of date so i did that but they're just sort of normal things nothing nasty about it at all toilet down there um yeah these are pretty straightforward things you've got the fluids on the right hand side and a flush um but yeah not really much else to show in the bathroom really these little dehumidifiers are really good. Um, it just stops any sort of damp and condensation from forming, which is why people tend to have them. TV aerial, uh, this is a tilt and turn aerial then. So you've got basically a, a little bit of the top that you loosen off, loosen it off and then push it up and twist it around wherever you need to, to get a decent signal. Um, so you do have to do that as well as turning the booster on, but yeah, there you go. Nice and easy. Basically, if you're on a campsite, have a little look at everybody else's and see where they're facing and uh, try, try and copy them, essentially. Um, so you've got these windows up here, which push out and then lock like so. Again, working really well. Nice and strong catches on those. I'll just open up the other one as well so you can see. There you go. So, last thing I'm gonna just quickly run you through is going to be the fridge down here so you've got gas 240 volt and 12 volts there's a three-way fridge so you've basically got an ignition here from this button just here and the gas valve so you push in and round to the left to allow the gas through whilst pressing on the igniter that should then light the gas up if you're hooked up on the mains press up on this little rocker switch on the right hand side and that should send power to the element and if your engine is running, you should push down to the 12 volt one. Um, but that is all there is to it, really. Nice and easy. So, pop that away, nice and neat. Uh, oh, the only other switch that there is, is in the bathroom, that little uh, vent up there on the ceiling. If I press this button just here. It's actually a... Uh, like a like a, a fan if you like a fan vent extractor kind of thing so that's what that little black switch there does but yeah i mean i must admit i was pleasantly surprised with the vehicle um you know as i said a minute ago it's only really been little things that i've kind of done and tinkered with um just to kind of bring it up to up to scratch uh everything else i mean i haven't really had to do much to it at all so uh, as I say, I've gone through, I've checked, everything works, um, pressure tested the gas, replaced all the, the, the bits and pieces to make it gas tight. Uh, so yeah, fingers crossed you're happy with the vehicle and you know, we can go from there. So um, if you think I've missed anything out or you want anything going over again, just let us know. But otherwise, look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks very much.